There has been some debate as to whether or not the albums by 21 Pilots, which came before Blurry Face, should be considered part of the lore. But in a recent interview, Josh Dunn confirmed that he and Tyler began working together on the lore almost immediately after he joined the band, which pretty much solidifies regional best as part of the lore. However, interestingly, Josh also strongly implied that Tyler had already begun working on the story even prior to that, which is a strong indication that self-titled is pretty lore related. So with that in mind, I thought I would go ahead and do something which I've been wanting to do for a while, and take a look at the story of their self-titled album. Now, I'm not sure that every single song has an explicit connection to this overarching story, but there is a clear narrative arc that you can see playing out from the beginning all the way to the end. A narrative which I believe is the outline and foundation upon which the world of Trench and Dima was built. In one of Clancy's earliest letters, he describes having been in the city of Dima for nine years. This letter was published in 2018, nine years after self-titled. The story of this album begins with Fallaway, as Tyler is pulled into the city of Dima. Despite his attempts to resist, he appears to be seized by the bishops, as we see in the pre-chorus. I can feel the pole begin, feel my conscience wearing thin, and my skin, it will start to break up and fall apart. Now, this idea of flesh decaying and falling apart is mirrored in the song Vignette, which has this line. It's a tribute to zombies of which I've become. We also know that the bodies of the seized decay over time. So the parallels between these two things are very strong. There's also an interesting line in the chorus of Fall Away. I will keep the lights on in this place, because I don't want to fall, fall away. Obviously there's the imagery of light versus dark at play here, with the light bringing a sense of security. But what's interesting about this is if you look at the album artwork, you'll see that the light bulb appears to have been shattered, as if this attempt to stay in the light has been overcome. Moving into the first verse, we hear this line. I disguise, and I will lie, and I will take my precious time, as the days melt away, as I stand in line. Having entered Dima, Tyler disguises his identity and falls into the rhythm and routine of the city, content to become complacent. He picks out a new name in this new place, while simultaneously recognizing that my name became a new destiny to the grave. Much of this is mirrored in later songs, such as the idea of Dima being a new place, as we see again in Jumpsuit, or disguising himself as someone else. In many ways, the fifth track on the album, Friend Please, is a song which Tyler writes to himself, as he feels himself falling under the control of Dima. In the song, we hear the following lines. Would you let me know your plans tonight? Because I just won't let go until we both see the light. Friend, please remove your hands from over your eyes for me. Clearly, a part of him still realizes that there's a light towards which he must aim, but another part of him is content to just cover his eyes, ignore that light, and live in fear, afraid to escape. The years pass, and Tyler appears to have fully accepted his fate as he falls in line, no longer looking up or looking for a way out, joining the others in their march to the sea. The second verse in the song sums up the situation. No one looks up anymore, because you might get a raindrop in your eye, and heaven forbid they see you cry as we fall in line. And about this time of every year, the line will go to the ocean pier and walk right off into the sea, and then we fall asleep. This perfectly illustrates something which is alluded to in Clancy's letters, an annual assembly of the glorious gone in which there's a kind of yearly death march, perhaps a march from the city of Dima to the port of Vile. But as Tyler marches to the sea, a question forms inside his mind as to why he falls in line. Two sides of him appear in conflict, a stark contrast to the hollow conformity of those around him. Ultimately, this new spark of rebellion inside of him takes hold, and he realizes the line is dead, and he no longer wishes to follow it. He attempts to escape, and blindly puts his faith in the wrong thing, saying, Take me up. Seal the door. I don't want to march here anymore. However, as we later hear explained in the song Morph, off of Trench, above is blind belief, and not the way out of Dima. So Tyler is brought back to the city of Dima, and placed once again in the march to the sea. The song Trapdoor picks up where March to the Sea left off, 
But now Tyler has begun to disassociate, imagining this identity of Clancy to be someone wholly separate from himself. This song is almost written from the sidelines, as he watches the events which we saw unfolding in greater detail during the Scaled and Icy era. Tyler describes how he wakes up early today, throws on a mask that will alter his face. Nobody knows his real name, but now he just uses one he saw on a grave. As I mentioned earlier, it is clear now that Clancy was the name on the graves, given the alignment of the Clancy artwork and the neon gravestones. Then, in the chorus, everyone gathers around for a show, as Tyler is forced to perform under the control of the bishops and for the entertainment of Dima. The Tyler we know is gone, and this controlled shell of himself has now appeared. In the second verse, we get a reference to the hijacked false religion of vilism which the bishops of Dima are presenting, as well as a more metaphorical reference to the fact that this entire struggle is taking place inside his head. And in the final line of the song, we hear this, Nobody knows he's alive. Which is an obvious reference to the album Scaled and Icy, which was discovered to be an anagram of the phrase Clancy is dead. Obviously it was later revealed that Clancy is in fact very much still alive, but at the time in which Scaled and Icy and the events of this song were taking place, nobody knew that. So he's not dead. And as we see later, he actually manages to escape, and winds up on an island outside the main continent of Trench. There he meets up with the Torchbearer, as we hear in the next song, A Car, A Torch, A Death. And then I saw him, torch in hand. He laid it out, what he had planned. And then I said, I'll take the grave. Please just send them all my way. From this, it seems very likely that Tyler is preparing to give his life in order to take down Dima. The torchbearer lays out a plan, and Tyler tells him, I'll take the grave. I will die. Just send all the enemy towards me. Interestingly, earlier in the song, it seems that he has the opportunity to just get in a car and drive away from Dima and leave forever. But he chooses instead to stay and fight. The song ends with this verse. The air begins to feel a little thin as we're waiting for the morning to begin. Which neatly parallels the letter from Clancy in which he describes that they're waiting to attack in the morning. There's also an interesting parallel in the second verse of this song, which is worth mentioning. We hear this line, I begin to envy the headlights driving south, which is the same direction that we hear again in the song The Judge. I head out down the route I think is heading south. It's not a major plot point, but it is an interesting similarity. But to return to the story, the plan of attack has been made, and Tyler is preparing to give his life in the morning. Then we get the song Taxi Cab, full of symbolism and imagery. The chorus presents an interesting contrast, saying, sometimes we will die, and sometimes we will fly away. It seems that the ability to fly is the ability to escape death. So to be a flightless bird is to be a bird doomed to die. But at the same time, Tyler no longer seems to fear death, but instead has accepted that it will come at some point. Either way, you're by my side until my dying days. And if I'm not there and I'm far away, I said, don't be afraid, we're going home. And then in the bridge, we get a glimmer of hope a glimpse of the dawn which approaches after darkness. As he wakes up in the back of a car, we hear Tyler ask his drivers, Am I alive and well, or am I dreaming dead? Then one turned around to say, We're driving towards the morning, son, where all your blood is washed away, and all you did will be undone. At last, Tyler has found himself on the right track, heading in the right direction but he still needs to make it there. In the second to last song, Before You Start Your Day, we see Tyler preparing as the morning approaches, preparing for the final attack. It is perhaps after this song that he goes and sits on the cliff's edge, watching the sunrise as he plays Paladin Straight. And then, with morning almost here, the final battle, the climax of the story, begins in Isle of Flightless Birds. Tyler recognizes that he is past the point of no return, and fights without fear or hope, but only determination. He puts his money where his mouth is, telling us, it's time to pick your battle, and I promise you this is mine. I promise you, this is mine. But as he attempts to fly, 
the ground taunts his wings, and he plummets downwards. We can only hope he took the enemy down with him as he fell. In many ways, the story appears to be one which takes place over the course of the night, whether one literal night or the metaphorical night of the soul. But either way, the goal is to pursue and reach the morning light, which signals the end of the night and the rising of the sun in the east. Head true east and wait for the dawn. That at least is my interpretation of the story of 21 Pilots. Thank you so much for watching this all the way to the end. As always, let me know in the comments what you thought on the story arc and how you think the story is going to end. If you enjoyed this or found it interesting, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss more commentary and reviews.